Good morning, Cross Point City Church. I am so honored to be with you here today. It is just truly a blessing to be able to speak to you. You know how much I love your church. You know how much I love your pastor. James Griffin is one of the most gifted leaders, the gifted communicators that I know. In baseball, we would call James a five-tool guy. And so I am so proud of him and the way that he has led uh, your church throughout the years. And uh, so I'm truly honored and blessed just to be able to, to share with you here today. You know, in the book of Psalms, you, you may know this, the, the Psalms is a collection of songs. And they're written by several different authors. Most of the Psalms has been were written by King David. And they were written through uh, some of the most difficult days of David's life. And uh, he wrote some really heart gripping psalms. He wrote psalms of joy. He wrote psalms of praise. He just wrote during some of the worst moments of his life. And this particular psalm, which you're going to know, was written during one of David's most difficult times. I want to read to you right now from Psalm chapter 23. In Psalm chapter 23, here's what David writes. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now many of you, you know Psalm chapter 20, 23 by heart. It's like the John 3.16 of the Old Testament. But what you may not know is the crazy backstory that goes with Psalm chapter 23. These beautiful words are written by a man who is going through the most difficult time of his life. They are written by King David. And he wrote these as he was struggling through a very difficult situation. The backstory actually begins in, in 2 Samuel chapter 11. I'm just going to tell you about it. You don't need to turn there. Instead of being on the field leading the Israelites into battle, King David decides to stay at home. And one night he's walking around the palace rooftop and he sees a beautiful woman by the name of Bathsheba and she's taking a bath. And as we would say here in Dallas, Georgia, she was naked. All right. He sends a messenger to go get her and to bring her to his room. He has an affair with her and Bathsheba becomes pregnant. In order to cover up his sin, he decides to bring her husband, her husband Uriah, off the battlefield so that he can come home and be with his wife. But Uriah refuses to sleep with her because he's in war mode. He actually sleeps on their front porch. And so David, not knowing what to do next, decides to have him killed on the battlefield. And because sin always has consequences, David's family begins to unravel. They begin to unwind. The baby that he, he has with Bathsheba dies seven days after he's born. David's oldest son Amnon falls in love with one of David's daughters, Tamar, and he ends up raping her. Another son, Absalom, becomes enraged by what happens to his sister. So in retaliation, he goes and kills his brother Amnon. And while all of this hap is happening, David is doing nothing. He is not engaging the situation. And so because he refuses to lead his family through these difficult times, Absalom becomes very arrogant and very powerful. He becomes so powerful that a group in Israel begin to follow him. Next, Absalom creates a conspiracy against David to overthrow him and kill him so that he actually can become king. And as a result of all of this, David now is forced to flee Jerusalem and he's hiding in the desert. He is running from his very own son who is trying to kill him. And by the time we get into 2 Samuel 15, David is standing on a slope on the side of the Mount of Olives. He is barefoot, he is crying, and his head is covered to show his sorrows. Now remember, this is a man who is God's chosen king to lead God's chosen people. He is the leader of the world's most powerful army. He is the same guy who, who killed Goliath. David was a legend. 
Songs were written about David. Foreign nations feared him because other leaders, they saw that, that he had a supernatural force that was always on his side. He was on top of the world, and yet here he is. His life and his family are literally falling apart. And he's discouraged, he is depressed, he is overwhelmed with his own emotions. And it was during this time that David pours out his, out his heart, out the depths of his heart into what we know today to be the 23rd Psalm. I want you to listen to David's words in the very first verse. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David is saying, Lord, because you're my shepherd, I don't need anything else. Lord, because you're my shepherd, I'm totally content. I'm satisfied with where you have me in my life at the moment and how you're taking care of me. Lord, I am totally dependent upon you. I wonder how many of us could honestly say something like that right now to God. Listen, we know we're in the middle of a health crisis like none of us have ever experienced before. We're watching racial tension unfold in our country like, like we have not seen or experienced since the late t- uh, 1960s. We're wit- witnessing a, a, a political division like I've never seen in my lifetime. So many people over the last few months have lost their jobs. So many people are currently looking at their future with uncertainty. There's a lot of people who are overwhelmed with fear about what the future may look like. And yet here's David, who is experiencing many of the same emotions that we're all dealing with today. And he says, listen, I'm content. I do not lack anything. Now how in the world could he say that? With all that I've just told you about what David's going through, how could he find that kind of contentment? Well, David says, here's how I see the Lord during times of uncertainty and fear. He says, the Lord, the Lord is a shepherd. Now, David uses the words Jehovah Reha to describe his shepherd. The word Jehovah is is the Hebrew word Yahweh. It's the most personal name out of all of God's names that we find in the Bible. And David says, since Yahweh is my personal shepherd, he says that I'm not lacking for anything in this life. In other words, he says, I shall not be discontent. I'm not going to be resentful. I shall not be unsatisfied. If I'm depending on Yahweh to be my shepherd, then I have everything I need. However, if I am in want, then I must be depending upon or being led by another shepherd. And here's the truth. Every one of us is being led by a shepherd at this very moment. Here's what I mean by this. If our lives are dependent on the shepherd of our career, then we will always be restless. We will always feel frustrated and our lives will be literally out of whack. If we're depending on the shepherd of our finances then we're never going to be satisfied and we may find ourselves emotionally bankrupt. If another person is our shepherd or we're being led by the shepherd of relationships, then we will eventually be disappointed and ultimately we'll be left feeling empty. But if the Lord is your shepherd, if Yahweh is your shepherd, David says, regardless of what you're going through, you shall not want. In other words, you won't be lacking for anything. So David says the Lord is a shepherd. But the question that we all have to ask ourselves today is this. If he is your shepherd, if he is the one that is leading you this morning, is he the one that you're depending upon? Is he the one that you're depending upon? Well, if the Lord is truly our shepherd, then what does that make us? Well, we are sheep. Several years ago, I read a book on Psalm 23. Uh, It's called A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23. It was by a guy named, uh, named Philip Keller. Keller's a guy that had spent some time working as a sheep rancher for several years, and he wrote about his experience with sheep in light of Psalm 23. And Keller talks about how sheep require more attention than any other livestock. They cannot take care of themselves. They are not intelligent, and they're actually pretty dirty. In Matthew 9, when, when, when the Bible tells us that Jesus looked upon the people with compassion as he was coming in into Jerusalem, Matthew says that he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. Now I want you to know this. Listen, when Jesus says those words, they were, they were spoken out of compassion, but they were not a compliment. Jesus saw the people in front of him as helpless and confused. Philip Keller goes on to say that unless a shepherd leads a herd of sheep out of a pasture, they will stay in one place and actually ruin a pasture. They'll eat every blade of grass until until a fertile pasture is nothing but barren soil. You cannot drive sheep like cattle. They have to be led. Sheep are nearsighted. 
very stubborn, but easily frightened. They have no means of defense and they have no uh, homing instincts. In other words, cat, dogs and cats and horses and, and birds, they can find their way home. But when a sheep gets lost, it's a goner unless someone comes along and rescues it. There's no way a sheep could ever make it out in the open without a shepherd. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 53, verse 6. He, sa- verse six, he says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Now you may not feel like this, but God compares us to sheep. You're a sheep and I'm a sheep. And because we are sheep, we do not have the wisdom, we do not have the strength to make it out there in the big, bad, open world without the right shepherd leading us. We'll get eaten up, we'll get attacked, we'll get trampled, we'll, we'll be led astray. So what do we do? Well, let me tell you one of the biggest lessons I've learned over nearly 55 years of living. I know I don't look that old to any of you here today, but that's what's going on in my life right now. Total dependence. Total dependence is, is being absolutely and thoroughly convinced that you can do nothing apart from Jesus. And if we're going to make it successfully out of this very difficult, very tough season that we're all in together, that we have to be totally dependent upon the Lord as our shepherd. Why? Why, why do we need to be dependent on a shepherd? Well, first of all, David, tell, David tells us we need peace in our soul. Verse 2 says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Philip Keller tells us that, that in order for sheep to feel comfortable enough to actually lie down, four things need to happen. One, they have to be full. A hungry sheep will, will stay on its feet looking for more food. They're not going to lay down until they're full. The second thing is they cannot be afraid. They will, they will not lie down if they're fearful. If, if they suspect danger, they will stand on guard ready to run at any moment. They also have to be content. Be content. If a fly or a, a flea is bothering them, they will not lie down. Number four, they, 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 will, also, they, they will not lie down unless there is, is harmony in the flock. If there is friction in the herd, they cannot relax or lie down. But listen to what David says about the Lord, his shepherd. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Think about, think about what, what, what our lives were before we had ever even heard the phrase COVID-19. I don't know about you, but, but for me and for so many people that I know, our lives were busy. They were hectic. We were going from event to event, from thing to thing, to place to place. We, we rarely slowed down to find peace in our soul, to find peace in our inner being. And sometimes God comes along and he makes us lie down once in a while, doesn't he? Sometimes God will actually slow us down in our tracks or sometimes he will actually come alongside and stop us in our tracks. Why? Why would he do that? So he can restore our soul. So he can teach us to find our contentment only in him so he can help us to overcome our fears he is a shepherd that that knows exactly what we need every single moment David also says he leads me beside quiet waters sheep are scared to death of moving water you can you can imagine with with all that heavy fur on them that they're 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 poor swimmers think about trying to swim in, in a heavy wool coat So what does a good shepherd do? Well, he'll go upstream and he'll build a dam. He'll make a a quiet little pool where sheep can drink from still waters. Listen, God knows our weaknesses. He knows our struggles. And when we're following him, when we're totally dependent upon him like a good shepherd, sometimes he will step in and he will cause us to lie down. He leads us beside still waters And he restores our soul. Here's another reason we need to be dependent upon a shepherd at this very moment in our lives. Is we need direction in life. Look at verse 3. It says, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Hebrew word for path means well-defined. It means a well-defined, well-worn trail. One of of the things about, about sheep is even when the trail is clearly laid out in front of them, they still wander off the path and they still get lost. And David says that when we are totally dependent upon the Lord to be our shepherd, to be our guide, he leads us down the right path. He actually guides us for his namesake. 
And one of the names for God that we see in scriptures over and over is the name faithful. He is called faithful, the faithful God in Deuteronomy 7, 9. And I got to tell you, as I look back over my own life, I see valleys, I see mountains, I see starts, I see stops, I see bumps and bruises, but I also see a string of God's faithfulness that just runs through all of it. I see moments where, where, where I was wandering off course and God stepped in and he, and he put me back on the right track. He was guiding me back on the right track. Why? Because he's faithful. It's part of his character. And some of you need direction in your life right now. You need answers. You need wisdom. You, you, maybe you're at a crossroads in your life and maybe, maybe you've actually wandered off course. Let the Lord be your shepherd. Let him guide you back to the right path because his path is well-worn, it's tested, it's tried, it's true. He's not going to mislead you. He's not going to misdirect you. He's faithful. It's just who he is. And then David says we need a shepherd because we need protection from things that could harm us. Verse 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here's the picture. You have a shepherd leading his sheep through the valley in the desert of Judah, and there are deep shadows that are just falling all over the trail. And you really cannot see what's ahead of you. It's actually scary. There are thieves that are ahead. There, there could also be dangerous animals that you can't see around a curb. There, there could be flash floods. There could be death. We don't really know what lurks in the shadows ahead of us. It's scary being in the valley and not knowing what's next. And David says at this very moment, he says, I'm personally walking through one of these dark valleys in my life where I actually don't know what's ahead of me. But he says, I will fear no evil for you, my shepherd, you are with me. I mean, isn't that encouraging? We can all relate to that, can't we? I mean, through the roughest moments of life, God promises his presence. When we're walking through these valleys where we don't know what's next, where we can't see what's around the next corner, God is offering, he is saying, listen, I'm going to be with you. I'm walking with you through these shadows, through these dark moments. And then David says this, Lord, he says, your rod and, and your staff, they comfort me. A shepherd's rod was used as a club to drive off wild animals. It was never used to beat the sheep. Instead, it was used to protect the sheep. It was used to, to ward off predators. A shepherd's staff was a, was, a, was, a, was a slender pole with a hook on the end of it. And if a sheep got off the path or was too close to, to a cliff, the, the shepherd would, would hook a leg or it would hook a, the, the sheep by the neck and it would gently pull the sheep back to safety. Sometimes he, he would use the, the pole maybe to poke the sheep in the side to direct it. When you study how a shepherd tends to his sheep, it, it really it, it gives us a picture of, uh, into God's character, doesn't it? And listen, so many of us think that when we wander off the path that God comes along with his, with his rod and his staff and he's smacking us around like a hammer. Like, like he's just waiting with this, this hammer in his hands to come along and knock us upside the head if we wander off the path. And honestly, I mean, I grew up with that image of God in my mind. But over the years, here's what I've learned. That's not God's character. That's not how he operates. When we wander off course, he, he may discipline us, but he always does it in love. He's like a, a good shepherd who uses his staff at times to get us back on the right track. He may see us getting ready to fall off a cliff and he, he comes along and he hooks us and he pulls us back. He may use it to pull us away from some bad influences who are ready to pounce on us. But regardless, he always does it because he loves us. And then David says this, we need a shepherd because we need someone to provide for our needs. Look at verse 5, he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. What, what's happening here? Well, all of David's picture of God, the picture that he has created of God as a shepherd, now changes from shepherd to gracious host. And in 2 Samuel 17, as David is being driven further into the desert by Absalom's rebellion... He finds himself hungry and weary. And out of nowhere, three men who are not even Israelites, they come to him and they bring him a bed, they bring him food, and they actually bring him a bath. They even feed the people that are traveling with David. And David is saying, God, here I am. I am struggling. I am at my lowest moment. And you still, 
Even when I can't see where you're going, I can't, I can't see you, you're still faithful. Not only do you send people to provide for my physical needs, but you let me know how important I am to you. Listen, some of you right now are weary of the financial struggle that you have been going through over the last past few months. It's just wearing you out. Some of you feel like you're getting pounded left and right by bad news. I mean, you don't know what's going to be ready to come next. Or, or you feel like overwhelmed by maybe people coming against you. Some of you are trapped in fear. You're trapped in worry right now. Listen, did you know that more than 90% of what we worry about, we actually have no control over? Worry isn't just our mechanism to try to, we're, excuse me, worry is just a, a, our, our mechanism to try to control what we have no control over. Because we think if I worry, then at least I'm doing something, right? But what, what ends up happening? We just end up hurting ourselves. We hurt ourselves physically. I mean, there are proven studies that show that stress and worry can do serious damage to us physically. We hurt ourselves emotionally because we become trapped at times in, in despair or depression and discouragement. And we ultimately hurt ourselves spiritually. Because worry ultimately says, God... I believe in you, but, but I don't actually trust you. Listen, whatever you're going through today, whatever has a grip on you, it is powerless against God's faithfulness and his ability to provide for you. Philippians chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 19, the apostle Paul says, And my God will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. We need to turn our worries and our fears and our doubts over to our gracious host who has the ability to meet all of our needs according to his never-ending supply of riches. And then David says this, we need to be dependent upon a shepherd because we need a friend who will walk through life with us. Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The word follow literally means to pursue or to chase us. And I love this picture that David is writing about. David says the goodness and the love of God is going to pursue him all the days of his life. And some of you may, who are watching this right now, you may be wondering, Lord, do you actually care about me? Does God truly care for us at moments like this or in any moments? And God says there are two things that you need to know about the relationship that I want to have with you. For the rest of your life, I'm going to pursue you with my goodness. And for the rest of your life, I'm going to chase you down with my love. I mean, what an amazing picture of God's faithfulness. I mean, can you you imagine how different your life could truly be if you could fully grasp how much God truly loves you? I look back at my life and I see moments where I actually thought God was trying to harm me. Instead, what he was doing was he was pursuing me with his goodness. He was actually chasing me down with his love. And then finally, here's the icing on the cake, and I love this. This is the bonus. David says, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, this has been understood in a lot of different ways by a lot of different scholars. Some see it that David is talking about a future picture of heaven. Some see that, it, that David is talking about worshiping in, the, in a physical sanctuary. But let me tell you what I believe it means. The word house of the Lord is not referring to a a structure. It's not a, a building. Instead, it's a metaphor for a close, special closeness with the Lord. It's a relationship that is that is so special and so meaningful that you would never want to walk away from it. You would never actually want to leave the fold. You would never want never actually want want to wander away from this shepherd. Because after experiencing his goodness and his love and his care and his faithfulness and his protection and his ability to to just provide for your needs, you would never settle for anything less than total dependency upon the Lord being your shepherd. And so if you are God's child, listen, one of of you are one of God's sheep, the, the key to unlocking all of these things that David talks about here today, peace in your soul, direction in life, protection from the things that would harm us, provision for your needs, and an intimate walk with a shepherd. It all comes down to this one question. Who are you depending upon today? Who are you depending upon? Who is the shepherd of your life? Listen, we're all sheep. Every single one of you. You're a sheep, I'm a sheep. 
but who are you following today? Before we close, I, I actually have one more question. It's real simple. Do you know the shepherd that David is writing about here? Can you honestly say that God is your shepherd? Here's what Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 27. He says, my sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Are you one of God's sheep? If you are, do you hear his voice? Does he truly know you? And are you following him today? I would ask you today to bow your head. If you're sitting here in the auditorium or if you're watching on a screen somewhere, would you just take a moment, just bow your head. If you have never put your faith and your trust in the shepherd that David's writing about here today, in Yahweh, in Jehovah, this Lord that we find throughout the, the words of the Bible who has so many different names, but today he's Jehovah Re'ah, the Lord who protects, the Lord who guides, the Lord who provides. At this very moment, you can put all your faith and all your trust in him alone. If you have never received him to be the savior of your life, the shepherd of your life, you just pray with me at this moment. If that, you've never made that decision before or if you're uncertain about it, just say, Lord, at this moment, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, I need you. I put my faith and my trust in you right now. I am a, I'm a sheep without a shepherd. I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a student, I'm a young adult, I'm a child without a savior, without a shepherd. And today I put all my trust and all my faith in you, God, to be my shepherd. I put all my faith in you, Jesus, to be my savior. Would you forgive me of my sin? Would you forgive me for the way that, Lord, I've allowed my life to wander off course, to follow so many other shepherds out in the world today. I put all my faith and my trust in you alone, and I receive salvation into my life. Forgiveness, Lord, it's mine today. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. With your head still bowed for just a moment, if you just prayed that, thank the Lord for this moment. It's the most important moment of your entire life. You have now put your faith and trust in Jesus. You have told him and confessed with your lips that you believe that he is the son of God and he has now forgiven you of your sins. And at this very moment, you now belong to him. Listen, you are still a sheep, but now he is your shepherd. With our heads still bowed for just this moment, for those of you that know Jesus as your personal savior, but maybe this last, this, this season that we're in over the last several months has just worn you out. You are walking through a valley right now. The shadows on, that, on the path in that valley just seem so dark to you right now. Maybe you know someone who's suffering right now, who's struggling, who's sick. Maybe who's somebody who's, we know people even just recently who have come down with, with COVID and we're praying for them. But, but you personally, you, your, your heart is full of anxiety and worry and fear. And you're on this, you're on this trail and you don't want to wander off, but, but you're scared because you don't know what's around the next, the next corner. You don't know what you're about to face. You don't know when the next word of bad news is gonna drop. And yet we know that we have a shepherd who's leading us, who's literally holding our hands. And maybe at this very moment, you need to take all of those fears and worries and moments of anxiety, and you just need to put it on his shoulders. You need to cast your burdens and your cares and your fears and your worries on a shepherd who is literally wanting to lead you through these moments, who promises to provide, who promises to guide, who promises to direct, who promises to not only protect and supply, but to also care for you. And so if that's where you are, just take a moment at this, just and say, Lord, I cast all my burdens, all my cares, all my fears, all my doubts, all my uncertainties on my shepherd on Jehovah Re'ah, the one who guides, the one who leads, the one who is my shepherd today. And I thank you that I can trust you today. Lord, I am a sheep and you are my shepherd. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name.